If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This is another of our popular Listener's Choice interviews, which we're playing over the weekend. We've chosen the most popular interviews for you to select the Listener's Choice winner. If you're not sure how the Listener's Choice competition works, have a look at horsechats.com slash choice for the rules and the leaderboard. If you have the same vision as International Horse College, which is to have a world where people safely appreciate, respect and enjoy their horses, and the horses appreciate, respect and enjoy their people, then have a look at their website, internationalhorsecollege.com, registered training organisation 31352. Today we've got a very special guest on Horse Chats. I'm sure you've heard of the movie The Mustang. Now we've got Lord Declare Montanay, who's a co-writer of The Mustang. We're going to talk to her about how the seed of The Mustang, the movie, came about. And um, I have to say, I've seen the movie and it is absolutely one that horse people are going to love. Now, I love any horse movie. I will go and watch some corny old cowboy movies if I have to, you know, but this one is so much more than just a horse movie. And um, I don't want to go into it. I don't want to tell you the story. I want you to go and see it. But it's one, it's an absolute must for anyone who understands horses. The big bonus for me, and I'm sure for a lot of horse people, is that it's not just a movie for horse lovers. So if you've got any non-horse loving partners, other family members or friends that you'd like to go and see the movie with, it's perfect for them as well. And they will thank you for inviting them. But meanwhile, I'm going to introduce Law and um, Law de Clermont Montanay. How are you today? I'm very happy to have you on the show. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. Very nice to, to meet you and, and to talk with you. Yeah. Now, Law, we normally start off with a favourite quote. Now, a horse person, and I know you've got a horse background and you know, you're a horse person. To me, it's just if you've got some sort of an inspiring quote, it almost like someone can just be thinking about it for the day and thinking this can inspire me for the day. So what have you got? What have you got as a quote or or just something that you say to people, something that keeps you going? Oh, uh, so there's a quote that I really love from, from Mark Twain, and it's uh, they didn't know it was impossible, so they did it. And it's exactly what you have to keep in mind when you're about to start a film because it's such a, 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 a big uh, obstacles race. And, uh, and, and, and especially this movie, it's been five years that I have it in mind and from like the writing to putting together the finances, the cast, the crew, to shooting, to post-production. It's really like you have to be a little bit unconscious and a little bit crazy if you are aware of all the obstacles and all the issues you're going to face, then you, you're never going to do it. So I think like Mark Twain is very relevant when he says they didn't know it was impossible, so they did it. I think you should just go with this, you know, this, um, this spirit of like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going to fight. I'm just going for it. So, so, so yeah, so this is the quote that I, I, I keep in, in, inside me since uh, since uh, a while, and that uh, I reminded it pretty often. I think it's a very good quote for horse people. You know, we get lots of lots of things going on with us with our horses, but if you've had that long term goal, but tell us about the very first, almost like a seed that you planted. What gave you the idea? You know, the the whole combination. It, it seems. You know, you've got, and I know there's programs, and I know there's so much value in equine assisted therapy. But um, the combination to make this movie of horses and and really tough men and the whole, you know, the whole situation, what gave you the idea to put it, to start to put it together? So I, I, I was in France, in Paris, and I was reading by coincidence an article about pet partnership program in prison. It was about the therapists who were entrusting small animals in a French prison, such as rabbits, mouses, chinchillas, um, birds even, and uh, to, to, to inmates. 
And I was very intrigued by this odd pairing. And I decided to, to, to catch a train and to go, to go to this prison and to observe what she was doing between, um, uh, as a therapy by, by, by entrusting those animals to those men and how she was making them going through their problems and opening themselves. So that was fascinating. And from that experience, I wrote my short film, Rabbit, that I, I shot in New York like four years ago, five years ago. And I was so intrigued and passionate about this subject that I kept looking for more um, details. And, and then I found out about this horse um, program in, uh, in Nevada with uh, wild horses and inmates. And I was like, oh, that's, that's fascinating. This is the future film. This is the one I want to do. And uh, I, I, I did kind of a journalistic approach to, to contact and reach out to people and then um, flying there, spending time observing, interviewing men, observing each step of their connection with their horses. And most of them never been... Um, around horses before. So it's their first time and you can see so much going on into their transformation uh, psychologically and also in their body language. So I, I, I really enjoyed so much those research. Then it helped me uh, to deepen the script and the characters that I had in mind. And it took four years of research before really getting something specific and authentic. But I have to say that I... I miss those research. I wish I was <laughs> doing another film about it because it's really it really took so much of my of my journey. Yeah. And I'm just thinking the research you've done, the movie, do you think that that will help bring out more programs like this because they're so successful? Yeah, actually I would love to. I am now I just went back in prison last week in Arizona in Florence because they are having a program there. And I, I had the idea to put together an exhibition of portrait, black and white portrait of inmates and their horses, like the one at the end of the film, um, with like their name. And, uh, and, and hopefully we can publish a book. And the, all the benefit from those pictures or this book is going to get back to the program. So they, they have a really hard time to sustain the program financially. It's uh, it's private found, but it's really it's very hard. They do, they, they, they're lacking a lot of um, a lot of um, uh, tools and and and, uh, and equipment. So I really want to not only uh, I hope this film is going to be impactful on this field and uh, and hopefully in uh, you know on, 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 in, in, in all those politics to have to expand this program, but also I really like to myself be able to to help as much as I can decide. Um, so I already have uh, uh, some partnerships in association, whether it's preservation for white horses or it's association that su supports the, the inmates program, but I definitely don't want my experience to stop with the film. I want to keep going to be able to be helpful and useful for, for, for this, for them. Yes, yes. There was so much to do with making the movie, the movie itself. The horses that are used, are they all Mustangs or did you bring in any extra stunt doubles or anything like that? Yeah, actually we did. We, we had a mix of, uh, of horses. We had completely wild horses, Mustangs. Yes. That were, were in the background. We had um, white horses rescued from the sanctuary return to freedom that, uh, that the, the, uh, have been landed so that we trained them and, and they were like the horses in the film, like from the riders, the other riders. Yep. And Marky, the hero horse, uh, is actually three similar horses. We have one completely wild and for the stunts, and for the the, um, uh, the the first part, we have one semi wild who is still fearful and a little bit spooky and, and shy, but but, um, but but still approachable. 
And we have a third one who actually is a very, very well-trained horse who did the main scenes and especially like the second part of the film. And he's an Andalusian. He's not, he's not a Mustang. Um, he's, a, he's a Lusitano, sorry. He's a Lusitano and, and half Lusitano, half Andalusian. He's a, and it, actually, I kept that horse. I have that horse here in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, he became my, my horse. Was my producer and I decided to adopt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot about, um, you know, the man, the horse, the communication. And it, was it meant to be like a reflection of how, you know, if you think of two wild animals and then they start communicating with each other because it was like all of a sudden a bit of a tweak from the man and then a bit of a tweak from the horse and the, the partnership worked together. I mean, was that the, the aim to sort of parallel them as they, as they started to communicate with each other and communicate better? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like the first time I went to this prison in Nevada to observe, mm-hmm. it really struck me how, how strong was the identification between the man and the horse. Mm-hmm. Like if they were the, 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 the same person and also the horse trainer was pairing the horse and the man according to their personality. So it was a pretty good match each time. <laughs> and, um, and I could see like the, 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 the man mirroring his journey through the eyes of the horse. And it's like the horse was telling him who he was. And that, that, this, but, you know, this invisible dialogue was so powerful and so strong into um, emotion and building trust and respect between them. I feel that it was something very specific and, and especially because they have the same nature because the horse and the man are the same character. Yes. And I felt, I thought it was extremely powerful when I was uh, observing, observing that. The only difference between them is that the horse is innocent and the man is not. <laughs> but otherwise, they are exactly the same. They have the same theme of being threatened all the time and being scared and being... Um, mistrusted. I mean, there's a lot of uh, parallels. Yes, yes, and and you know, I have to think too that um, you know, such tough men, and then the bond they have with the horses, but the softness that it brings out in them. You know, men, inmates. You know, and the tears and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They, they teach. They teach. Like the horses teach them to love, to connect, and to be patient. Mm. So it's definitely for those men so much uh, a huge transformation in their lives because they usually, suffer, for most of them, they suffer from a lack of love and tenderness and, and being so isolated and being so full of shame and anger being locked in for, for mistakes that the attention of a horse and the connection, building something with this creature is, is, is everything for them. Um, they are extremely uh, crushed when they have to say goodbye. This is another part of uh, this connection after when they have to give them back for the auction. That's, I, I went there for many auctions. It was very, very sad. But also they said that there's a part of them that going, that goes in the, in, in, you know, in the, um, that goes outside uh, back to freedom. So they feel that there's kind of a part of their soul that goes out, (laughs) uh, you know, with those horses. Mm -hmm. And the vulnerability throughout the film, it's more sensitive, you know, and I'm just thinking between a female and a male, do you think because you had so much influence with the film that it was more coming from a vulnerability, the female perspective? So I, I, what I really deeply think is like when I was doing my research, if I was a man, I don't think I would have that much trust um, or, or so much stories, so much like they, they really opened themselves to me, maybe because I was a woman and I had this kind of sensibility and softness and, 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 and vulnerability that they felt they were safe with me. They, they had... They, between them, there's so much ego, there's so much power, so much rules. The presence of a woman is definitely softening and definitely like very calming. Um, I remember that when I was doing my research, there was this man journalist, and I was there too, and I could see a difference. Like those 
inmates were having much, um, they were more hesitant to open themselves to him than to me. So the only benefit to be a woman into this environment and to be able to research and to be able to go so deep is that I feel that I got most, m m more trust from them. And I also learned to, 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 to be comfortable in this environment years after years. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, I feel also like telling this story through my perspective as a French woman, um, because it's so much, there's so much brutality and so much violence and anger. And, uh, and the beauty of it is that when you see a man like dropping off this, his ego and getting humbled by the horrors and vulnerable, and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe probably a man would have done something differently or maybe similar or would have captured the sensibility. But because I was a woman on set with so much men around me and horses, there's something about them that they felt like a little kid. And there's something like safe for them to kind of open themselves so much in front of me. It felt safer for them to kind of let their ego beside. You know, I don't know if I'm clear, but I felt that my presence were allowing their vulnerability to be more, much more um, alive, you know. So in that sense, I feel that in my research and on set, being a woman and telling this story was kind of valuable. And, 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 uh, and I could see that uh, there, it was challenging, but I enjoyed it a lot. Yes, yes certainly brings more awareness to the impact that horses can have just on people that communicate with them, people that are around them. It, and we go back to the equine assisted learning and these sorts of programs. I just think that the, the positive nature of them, um, you know, you, you've highlighted that. I, I'm just thinking, Laura, if someone looks to you as a mentor, you know, as a, a writer, a producer, and says, right, that's what I want to do. I want to write a story about a horse, not necessarily, you know, horses in prisons and, and doing such a wonderful job that you did. But, it, you know, that if they wanted to get into this type of career to align with their horse career, what should they do? What's the first step? Um, I mean, definitely a lot of research and also depending on the field, you know, uh, a very, a very if you need to have as a character a horse in your film, you need to get a very, very good horse trainer. And that was like the main and the first key crew that I really needed is like this horse trainer who were capable of finding the right horses, understanding the camera and being able to have their horses trained for the camera. And, and, and that, that's, that's the real uh, vocation. That's the real job. Like, there's a whole, a lot of horsemen, or horse whisperer, or horse, um, you know, uh, or a horse trainer that are not capable to do specifically uh, uh, to work with horses and the camera and the crew. And so we found this man who actually um, uh, did Black Stallion and Hidalgo, and he did all the big films with horses because it's excellent. And there's not that many people like him. Um, and he actually uh, accepted as his last job because he's retiring now to to help us and to be to work on the film. And that was actually the, the success of the of the shoot. It was to have someone that was so good at what he was doing that brought also his own horses for the stunts and for other complicated scenes, and that uh, was capable of. Um, of uh, uh, getting the, the the right horse for, for for you know for the right scene, uh, as we had three similar horses for, for for the hero horse. So yes, he was excellent, and that that would be my first advice: is that if you wanna if you wanna talk about the horse as a character, you need to have a horse trainer, uh, with which you get along with. Okay, okay, good. Good. So if you think about, you know, in five years, I'm sure you would have had a lot of challenges. What do you think was the main challenge in putting the whole film together, the whole movie? The main challenge um, for this film specifically, uh, it was, it was the, 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 the lack of time. 
we were on a very tight schedule. We had 23 days to work with the horses and for all the stunts and all the scenes that we had to do and achieve. And there was a lot of unknown because of the horses. Even though we had our trainer, it's still an animal and you never know, you know, if it's going to be tired or not responding or just being, you know. So it, it was kind of like we were trying as much as possible to have a very light equipment so that we could be very agile with our camera and we could really adapt on the horse's um, uh, mood. <laughs> so we only we had two cameras for the whole shoot that was absolutely crucial so that we were always like rolling and rolling as much as we could so that we could have like the, you know, we could capture the, 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 the most important reaction or behavior of the horse. There was not automatically all the time in command, you know. So that, that was the challenge. And also after, with an animal, after two or three takes, it's tired. So you have to make sure that you have everything you need from the beginning. So we had a lot of rehearsal before the shoot. We had two weeks of rehearsal. Um, and, uh, and, and that was actually the challenge with the time. And, uh, and you cannot pressure an animal. You cannot. So it's kind of like he has to, to take his time. <laughs> so you have to be on his time. So that was actually what was the most challenging. Also, the lights, we were shooting outside, outdoor uh, for most of the scenes. And uh, it was like uh, we were shooting in the desert. And the light is going up and down very quickly. So we had some challenges to, to keep the continuity of the light. Uh, so even though in post-production, there's a lot you can do. There's, at some point, <laughs> you still need to get the same, you know, atmosphere. So. There was a challenge as well, um, but I would say mostly the, the 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 time to work with those horses was very limited, and I, I, it was kind of stressful. Okay, okay. I'm just wondering because horses, you know, we always think of safety around horses because, you know, they're big, strong, dangerous animals. They can be dangerous animals. Safety wise, yeah. You know, any safety precautions? Obviously, your horse trainer would have had input into this but you know the safety procedures that you would have had around the film yeah i mean the, the entire crew had the, the rules from the horse trainer to not pet the animal to not to be quiet to not be uh, to, to be respectful of their space uh to so so the crew had to really be disciplined in that sense so it's this and everyone was very cautious because the horse trainer was kind of he was like, um, he's definitely like a figure of authority. So <laughs> you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to mess with him. Um, he, but that that was very important and for all of us. Um, uh, and also we we, uh, no, I mean the, Rex was was held by a bunch of colleagues around him that was wrangling the horses and take care of them, and. Um, and 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 then it was yeah he, he just he was just worried to manage us more than the horses <laughs> it was like the horses are fine as long as the men around are are be, you know are behaving so that was actually the main rule is just to us to behave around them you know and and just to be respectful and then just during the film so there is this scene where we put the horses in the kitchen during the storm. Yes. All the choreography with the horses, that was like Rex horses. That was the, the, the trainer's horses because he was like, I, I trained those horses. I raised them since they're kids. I know them. I know they can do it. I won't do it with any other horses I don't know. So we he brought for that team 20 of his horses that are not Mustang, that are trained, you know, from his barn. And, 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 and they were completely fine. They were completely safe. But... There, he knew exactly which horses were safe, which other were not. He knew exactly which riders could ride who and when. He 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 had this expertise of, you know, pairing the right horse with the right man, whether they were stunts or just riders. And also for the cast, I made sure to to, to hire experienced riders, um, uh, as the as the group of riders around them, you know, like. The scene at the uh, the auction, or when they're all like running into the wire, this is all just very experienced riders. Um, uh, so every main character had a double, a stunt double, 
to do like the, the complicated moments, like running into the wild or or obviously like all the stunts, like all the fall falling down and that, that was like stunts. But Rex was good at just like finding, you know, trying to, to see. And also each experienced rider had the same horse. So they, they were used to each other. So, you know, uh, every couple of horses and men were, did have like this bonding in, in, during the set because they were always like, you know, with each other. Yep. So that was really good. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look horsechats.com. Okay, and the horse trainer, you said that, um, you know, when you when you were getting your cast together that you made sure they were experienced riders. The horse trainer, was he involved in getting the cast together? Yes, yeah, we were involved. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, Matthias uh, did ride horses just a little bit, so he had to ride with Rex before with the horse trainer at his barn. He was riding and was training with him. And then there was like another actor, Jason Michel, who was not experienced rider as well. So he had to also train and he had also like a double because Rex said that there's things, a lot of things I couldn't do. He couldn't run, by example. He could trot, he could, he could walk, but he couldn't run. Um, there was like, and the other, the other riders around, I found those, this group of men from Compton in California, um, they, 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 they've been called the, the Compton Cowboys because they've been into this commercial and they're riding since they're kids. And it's kind of like this program for um, kids in, in need uh, in, in Compton. And, uh, and uh, so they, they grew up riding and they, they are very, very interesting men. And so we wanted to have like different faces, different communities. So we called them to, to be extras in the film. And so when they came, they were, we knew that, they were very experienced, and actually Rex was testing them, and the, he said that it was uh, there was yeah he actually like we, we did cast together like the group of men to make sure that you know they knew how to ride. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so just to do with the general care of the horses, the feeding of the horses, and they all looked you know good condition, somewhat you know like obviously coming in off the wild horses coming in looked looked like they'd been out to pasture almost, um, but yeah. they looked in good condition. Yeah. I'm wondering about the feed. Did you just give, you know, and whether you fed the the Mustangs different to the other horses, but um, the feeding of the horses, was it just hay? Did they get a feed? Did they get any grain? Did you have any input into that? Was that all the horse trainer or, or what can you tell us about the horse feed? So uh, the, the, the Mustang we used uh, were like, so we had a group of Mustang that was coming from the prison of Nevada because there's 1,000 of white horses there. And uh, no, they have hay, they have like basic feeding. Um, uh, I, I don't know specifically what, you know, from the grass that they graze from the wild to going to custody, what, you know, they definitely they can graze because there's some grass there. But they, def- they also have like hays and grains, and I don't really know the process of transition for them and how long it took. That that I don't know specifically. I just know that every day we were feeding them with hay and uh, and grains. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Now the movie itself, it's about to come out. Is that what date is it? What are you looking forward to? You know, you've got the movie uh, coming out, but but what else? What else in the big? It's uh, you asked for the date of release. Yes, please. Yeah, it's 15th of March. Um, 15th of March, it opens in New York and Los Angeles, and then it will open the following week to um, uh, multiple theaters all around the country uh, in the United States. And then it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an opening also in France in June, and I don't know about other countries, but I know there's going to be an opening also in England, uh, in UK, I don't exactly know when, but around April, and and then I don't know for the other countries yet. Okay. Now, what do you you know? You said before that that you didn't want it just to stop at the movie for this program. You wanted to go on, and you're you know you've got your book coming together with the photos of the inmates and their horses. 
Anything else that you've got coming up along the same lines? What's your plan in the future? Um, so those pictures are going to be, um, uh, there's going to be an exhibition in two cinemas in the Landmark Theater and in the Arclight. Yes. And then we're hoping to make a book and to sell those pictures and to give back to the program and, um, and to the horses. Uh, that, that's definitely my goal. I'd like to try to find a way to... Um, uh, it, there's a project that, I mean, it's still, it's still cooking <laughs> in, in my head. There's definitely more than I want to do to try to help and to support and to keep keeping a foot on, on this area because I, I'm very passionate about this, this uh, program and, and those stories and, and how those men um, change so much and we connect with themselves and with their families and then get the, a sense of their life and the future and, and, and definitely got a second chance. So I, I think that um, the problem now is when upon their release, it's so hard to be in the real world after being incarcerated because you don't have that much support. So, and there's a lot of uh, horses in, um, in holding facilities. So I was wondering if there's something to do to have like after the prison, to have like some, some, some support for those men who love horses and wants to keep working in this field and to go to the BLM holding facilities to take care of the ho those horses and to train them, to adopt them. Because those horses, wild, they're not in use for anyone, but when they're trained, they, they can be adopted. So there's definitely some a mutual benefit for those horses who, from a lot of them, spend their lives in holding facilities. Um, so yes, I'm cooking something, and it's not it's not that precise yet. I'm just thinking about what can be impactful and how I can keep you know um, uh, uh, supporting this this program and this rehabilitation. Yeah. Oh, Lord, it's been fascinating talking to you. I had the opportunity to watch the Mustang, you know, the movie, and I just jumped it. Thank you. It was just, it was so much more than a, a good horse movie. I mean, it was a great horse movie, you know, but it was so much more. And as I said, it, one that you could take the broader population. It wasn't specifically a horse movie. It was a broader population type movie, but you know, but the horse part was so good. So just a great combination and you've done a fantastic job with it. So I'd like to say thank you. And, thank you um, so much. Yeah. Love thank to, you. Uh, yeah. And when you, when you get your new, you know, Thanks when you've sort of started cooking your new idea, I'd love to get you back and talk to you about it and see what we can do to help you. Yeah, absolutely. That. Okay. absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 